Obviously, you, you would have the experience of being here, right? But this is different than anybody's ever experienced. So, I mean, did your UFC experience help you tonight in your nerves and your comfort level, or was this so different that it was like a brand new experience? It's weird, man. It, it, you, it's weird every time. It doesn't matter. There, it, it could be a million people out there. There could be nobody out there. It could, it's a it's a freaking fight. So, uh, you, it's weird. You know what I mean? It's strange. It's a strange thing that we do. And sometimes I don't know why the hell I do it. I mean, I do know why it's for moments like this, but it, I mean, going out there, it's, it doesn't matter who's out there. You're going to get those emotions. Um, I will say this with there not being anybody in the crowd. The one thing I did enjoy, um, as a fighter in those moments of exchanges, you know, the crowds will start cheering and they'll get real loud or they'll start booing or whatever. Well, that really affects your heart rate as a fighter, whether you want it to or not. And so that affects your breathing and in return that affects your cardio and in return that affects how fast you get uh, exhausted. So there in those, the, you know, in that quiet arena, um, you kind of got to settle in and um, it was almost like a, a, a sparring match or, or, or a tryout or something like that. So that was pretty cool about that, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's... Well, I was going to ask you, I mean, you, you did, it was apparent how incredibly comfortable you were in there tonight. Do you think that had a lot to do with it or is this maybe some maturity from, you know, your time away or some things that you've changed? Why, why were you so comfortable tonight? Yeah, I think it was a little bit of everything that you just uh, keyed in on there. Um, maturity is definitely one of them. Um, just not letting the situation get the best of you. Um, seeing... Seeing, seeing it is as it is, you know. I mean, seeing things for what they are, you know, not building them up to something so massive that you know you can't handle it mentally. Um, and and kind of what I mean by that is, um, it's a, it's it's a, all it is is a glorified sparring match, and you got to go out there and treat it as such. You know, don't let your emotions get in the way, and that's what I kind of try to do is. Um, from the beginning of walking out to getting in the cage, you know, I'll just try to put myself mentally in the spot that I'm just in the gym and this guy just came in and we're about to, you know, get a little sparring. So that really kind of kept my heart right down. So uh, it, I had to, man. I mean, I freaking had to. I got the call six days ago, last Saturday, you know. So I had, what, seven days from the moment he called me till I left to work at the fire station train do my sports performance training with my athletes and then train myself do all this USADA bull crap re-sign all the contracts and do my eye exam my blood work and my physical in six fucking days so I was like well, I better go out there and not blow my wad because you know what I mean like this that's it I haven't that's the first time I put my hands on anybody in two fucking months that's it I haven't done any sparring nothing so uh, you know the first round was a little bit rusty I got hit more than I like to but I you know made the adjustments and then uh, got the win so well it was a phenomenal performance so interesting fact you want to know something yes May 13th three years ago this exact day I beat Rashad Coulter for the first time well for the first UFC win, my first UFC win and fight of the night standing elbow finish three years later May 13th my first win back standing elbow finish isn't that weird? It is weird. That is weird. Got to book you on May 13th every year. It, the dude just told me back there that I'm tied for the record for m most standing elbow finishes in the UFC. I mean, it's only two, but fuck. It's a record. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, yeah. listen, it was a fantastic performance, and it's a fantastic performance now on the mic, too. But what's what's next for you, man? What, what's the plan? Man, it's a completely different approach this time, man. I'm not taking any more short-notice fights. I mean, I know I took this one, but that was just to get in. But I mean it this time. No more fucking short-notice fights. I'm going to buckle down and train like I need to. I'm going to get the opponents that I need. I'm not going to worry about being a company man. I'm going to take care of myself, you know. Uh, last time I had seven fights in the UFC, six of them were on short notice. Look at the competition that I fought. They used me as a fucking gatekeeper, okay? There was nobody easy that I, that I lost to, nobody. Shamil, Walt, Justin Willis, Justin, all guys that are in the top 10, top 15. So, um... You know, it's 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 a, it's completely different this time. I'm you know reborn again. I'm back, and it's uh it's time to make a statement. Chase, was it uh was it nice to punish someone while wearing gloves this time? Yeah, that was nice. I mean, I like bare knuckle. Like I can, you know what I mean. Like when you hit somebody, you know you fucking hit them. You like you feel it. It's like I don't know. You ever like. <laughs> I don't know. I can't really explain it to you, 
But it's, I mean, yeah, it was different. I mean, I could throw with a little bit more recklessness. I guess that's kind of why my hand is freaking killing me right now. But, um, you know, bare knuckle, you kind of got to pick your shots, be a little bit more poised, which, you know, that obviously helps too. You know, my boxing's obviously increased. Uh, my head movement there, but a little bit more rhythm, can take the angles I want to take. Um, so that little stint with bare knuckle is just added to the game, added to my game. So I'm really comfortable with my hands. You mentioned, you know, you had to work at the fire station and then get all this ready. The heavyweight champion, Stipe Miocic, has come under a little bit of criticism that he's not prepared to fight because he's got to work with this pandemic and he doesn't feel like he can get pre properly prepared. Do you think he deserves that criticism or do you think he should be allowed to just focus on his community? Rob? No, he should focus on his community. Fuck them. They're not, whoever's giving him that criticism, they're not doing what, what that guy has to go out there and do. You know what I mean? Like that's... You know what I mean? I took this fight because I wasn't in the UFC. I needed the opportunity. Now, if I was already signed with the UFC and I hadn't been training or anything, no, I'm not going to take the damn fight. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, he's doing what he needs to do. He's out there on the front lines, you know what I mean, you know, helping these people. And during this pandemic. So if that's what he wants to do, then that's what he wants to do. And people should just shut their fucking mouth. Just uh, one quick one right here. Uh, you said you're, you, there was no crowd, so you could keep your heart rate low. But could you hear the commentators out there during your fight? A lot of fighters on Saturday could hear them, and they would use uh -huh. that to their advantage. Uh, I wasn't listening to any... Um I didn't really, you know, I, I I heard Daniel a couple times, but it was not really instructions, really. It was just like, oh, he landed a big shot here. Oh, he landed one here. And I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, I did. So we went back to that. It was, you know, it was a little bit of a confidence boost from my life, but I key into my coaches more than anything, you know what I mean? So could you hear his corner? Uh, yeah, we're using code a little bit. I mean, I'm not worried about it. They were, you know, saying things like, well, you know, watch for the hurricane or he comes a hurricane or something. I'm thinking he was just saying, you know, I think the hurricane was just like the little flurry he kept trying to throw, you know, the three, two, three, whatever it was. I have to go back and watch film. But, yeah, there's a good group of guys over there, by the way, four ounce fight cub. So. Is that it? All right, cool. See y'all later. Hey, Chase. How's it going? Hey, who am I talking to? Where's your face? Uh, you can't see us. Uh, this is Neil with the PR team. Um, first question is going to be with uh, Jay Anderson with Cage Side Press. Jay, your line is open. Uh, Chase, first of all, congrats on the win. Uh, just walk us through that because it felt like an evolution of your game. I mean, I just I went out there and tried to stay calm and poised and and do the things I knew that I'm capable of doing. And um, do the things that I've always wanted to do. I just never pulled the trigger on. And um, I, I just try to live in the moment and not really think about the outcome. I mean, what do you attribute the improvements uh, tonight to? Uh, I mean, you really mix it up well. The leg kick's going, going to the body. Uh, is there anything in particular that you did to uh, bring that side of you out? Well, I tell you what, it definitely wasn't the extensive camp that I had because I took the fight six days ago, and all the gyms have been uh, shut down for two months, and um, that was the first time I put my hands on anybody in two months. So any kind of live training hasn't happened; just been hit pads, you know, and trying to get ready um, for this fight and everything that comes with it. Everything that people don't know about as far as the medicals and setting up doctor's appointments and, and USADA redoing all that. And, um, everything so but I really think it's just because I've just changed my game and a lot of it has the credit to like like uh, my little stint with bare knuckle boxing too I really kind of dove off into that realm of um boxing and um and with that it, it wasn't necessarily just the boxing because you you know you have big gloves on when you're boxing but there you you, you just have your bare hands so really keen in on being accurate with your punches and and picking the right shots. And um, that really helped me um, with some of the things I did tonight. And then obviously bringing back the low kick. A lot of people don't talk about it, um, but I'm here to make sure they do talk about it from now on. Um, I have one of the, I feel like I have one of the best low kicks in the game by far. Attributed is seven, I think seven first round finishes by low kicks. Broke two guys fibulous last fights. So you'll be seeing a lot more of that. And you definitely showed us tonight. He was definitely showing the effects of it. You also kind of touched on my uh, 
Next question a little. So I'm going to wrap it up with this. I mean, obviously, we are going through a lot in the world right now. Like I said, you weren't able to have much of a camp. You're a firefighter as well, a first responder. I mean, does that give you a different understanding of what's going on in the world right now? Um, it does a little bit, but um, I don't buy into it. I don't play into it too much. You know, it's just part of my job, and that's what I signed up for. Um, you know, it's just I, I just go and look at it like it's an everyday thing, an everyday job. And um, it, it's been a little – it's been strange times. I will put it that way. It's been strange times. So. You know, the department, we, we go in every morning, we have to get checked, we get checked after lunch, we have to get checked at dinner, and then we have to get checked the following morning when we go to leave. Um, responding to calls, we're staging a lot of calls. Um, we have, you know, these patients have to answer certain questions before we go in there. Once we do go in there, we're, we're pretty much... Um, All right. Thanks very much, Chiz. All right. All right. We now go to James Lynch with the score. James, your line is open. James. Hey. James. What's up, Chase? How's it going? Congratulations on the win. Hey, what are you doing? I'm here uh, talking to you. Congratulations. I wanted to know, you mentioned, uh, you know, how you hadn't, you know, had any fights or anything in the last couple of months. Was there less pressure going into this fight because it was kind of unexpected and there was no crowd? I mean, everything was a lot different than the last time you were in the UFC. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I'm trying to attribute it to the fact that, you know, I've changed my whole mental state in the game. Um, and I think that's part of it too, but uh, yeah, the no crowd, um, like I told some of the, the other reporters that the no crowd, um, really kind of kept keep my heart rate, you know, low as far as, um, as far as, you know, when, when you get in those big exchanges, the crowd's voice will start to raise and actually your heart rate will start to raise as well. The crowd starts booing you, you, you start feeling the pressure of having to engage and make sometimes careless mistakes. Um, so that was pretty cool. Um, no complaints there. I obviously love performing in front of people. I love putting on a show, but tonight it was all business. Um, what was the other part of that question? No, that was it. I was pretty much just asking you what your mentality was going into the fight. Um, and, and kind of, you know, leading off that, uh, Ike is a really tough guy to finish. We saw the iron chin. Were you worried at all about overexerting yourself? Uh, because, you know, he was taking some pretty heavy shots. You there? Yep. Okay. Can you still hear me? Yeah, I got you now. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I don't know if you heard that question. I was just basically saying, uh, were you worried at all that, that Ike was, uh, you know, he, he's got an iron chin where you, you were worried that you might not be able to finish him and, uh, not, uh, you know, overexert yourself. Oh yeah. I mean, that's how all Mexicans are, man. I mean, they fucking are tough. I don't know what it is, but we knew that, you know, just like they know that when they come in to fight me, you know, I got a granite chin too. So just, yeah, just picking the shots. And that's why you see me go to the body a lot more in the legs because you can't fake that. I don't care how tough you are. You know, I don't know if he was coming on a short camp or not either, but we're just going to go eat up the, we're just going to go beat them guts up. So you start thinking about the body and the legs, then we'll start, we'll, then we'll start going up top. And by that point, when you start going up top, he, he, he might not be rock, but you know, like his heart probably ain't in it anymore. You know what I mean? You take the body, you take the heart. And uh, I know this wind's fresh, but what's next? And, and when are you looking to get back in there? Any opponents you want to fight? Um, I I want to get better, man. I don't want to do what I did last time and rush into things. I want to get really good. Like I want, like I'm not. There's a lot of things I went out there and I didn't do what I wanted to do. You know what I mean? Granted, I didn't have the proper camp and you know I didn't get to do any live training or anything like that. But there's a lot of things out there that I've that I first saw my mind going completely differently. And in the first round, I was resorting back to a lot of bad habits, you know, fading straight back when he's throwing those combos instead of sitting in the pocket and, and, and shelling up. So I just want to get better, you know, and, um, and then I'm going to just take over this division by scoring. That's the plan. You know, remember where you are today, because this is about to be one of the best comebacks in sports history. I promise you. And just my last question, you mentioned how coming back to the UFC was like getting 11 wings in a 10 wing pack. What are your favorite wings? I got to know you got me a little hungry. Oh, I mean, I'm a spice. I like habanero wings, man. There's this place, 
uh, back home in Mississippi. It's called, uh, what's the damn name of the place, Robbie? Murky Waters, anyways, it's a barbecue joint. But anyways, they smoke their wings and then they just flash fry, but they make this, they make all their sauces homemade. And the garlic habanero is my favorite. Thanks for the time, Chase. Appreciate it. We'll now go to Louise Green with MMA Crazy. Uh, your line is open. Hey, Chase, can you hear me? Yeah. Hi. Congratulations on the win tonight. Um, can you talk yes. a little bit about your uh, return to the UFC and how much it means uh, to be able to get the finish here tonight? Um, the finish is not wasn't as important as the win. You know, we just want the W. And um, that's just the cherry on top. And it's, it's really, you know, I feel I'm ecstatic to be here. You know, I really am. I'm just truly blessed. Um, you know, this is the, like I said before, this is the anniversary Three years ago, when I won my first UFC fight, I have standing elbow. And I go and do the same thing again. So it's kind of cool, you know what I mean? It's just now the path has been set out before me, and now I have to travel it again, but with a new uh, uh, state of mind. You know, I know what to do and what not to do. And, you know, this has been obviously short notice for you. Have, how have you remained calm and so focused going into this? Obviously, it's not been normal circumstances for you. Yeah, um, I haven't had time to to let it weigh on my mind. I've been so damn busy, you know, trying to just get ready. I haven't had time, and um, and also, um, I, um, it's a different. I'm in a different state of mind. Like I said, it's not the pressure isn't there anymore because I know that the world isn't over after this. You know what I mean? There's so much more out there, and, and this is just an opportunity that I'm blessed to have, and I get to go out there and enjoy, try to enjoy myself. And have fun. Whereas before, I was just, I just felt like I had to win, 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 win at all costs, or I'd become irrelevant. And you mentioned, obviously, about your comeback. Um, what do you think of the landscape of the heavyweight division right now? And, and what do you see in your future? I think until you get into the top 10, it's wide open. I mean, it's wide open. It really is. It really is. Um, you know, I'm not going to sit here and talk bad about my division. Because there's people like to trash talk it about you know, this and that and how there's just not super dominant athletes in it. And there's always a, a changing of, you know, rankings. But we have very minimal room for error, very little room compared to the other divisions. We're bigger boys. We're stronger. Um, so you'll see that a lot. You'll see a lot of people not going on these super long win streaks. And it doesn't mean that we don't have talent in this division because we do. So, um, but I do believe that it's wide open until you get into the top 10. Two or three wins and you're in the top 15. Is this for you like a, a, like a second chapter in your journey in the UFC and, and your life as a, as a mixed martial artist? That's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. Um, not many people get a second chance at their dream, much less life. This is a second, opportunity. This is a second chance for me at life. You know, do it right this time. All right. Thanks for your time. Congratulations. Thanks.